Most preachers want to be popular, so they bring the popular, watered-down message of the day so that people can like them. They prayerless preachers, they're just mechanical. They're professional preachers. That's what they are. And preaching is not professional. Pre preaching is not a profession. It's a passion. It's built and cultivated through a relationship with God. And if you're not a praying preacher, you're not a preacher at all. And this is what we got, though, in this generation. Prayerless preachers. We are in a falling away right now. We are in a time where men have a form of godliness and they deny the power. They carry the name tag of Jesus. They talk good. They have abilities and talents, but they have no prayer life. They got abilities and talents and they professional speakers, but they have no prayer life. There's no desire for souls to come into the kingdom. They don't pray for souls. There's no brokenness over the loss. We got people that are on their way to hellfire. And if we are Christians and we are born again and we are saved out of darkness, we should have a broken heart. For those who are on their way to hell, there should be a desire to see them come into the kingdom. We should be praying for them. Yet we have prayerless preachers in this generation of the church. And we are in a falling away right now. We are in a time of apostasy. We are in a time of just professional preachers that just want the tithing money. So what they do is they water down the word of God so they don't offend anybody. They take the offense of the cross out of the preaching. Paul the apostle said, if I still preach circumcision, then why do I suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. See, the message of the cross is offensive. And contrary to today's modern church belief, the offense of the cross has not ceased. The message of the cross is still offensive. The preaching of God's word is still offensive. Yet today's preachers, they take the offense of the cross out. They dull the edge of the sword so that it's not so pointy anymore. See, the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's sharp and it digs into the disobedience of the heart when it's preached in partnership with the Holy Ghost. See, the preaching of God's word, it's sharp and it pierces the heart with conviction and this is what men don't want. They don't want the sharp preaching of God's word because it deals with the disobedience of the heart. It deals with the compromise of the heart. And men want their ears tickled. This is where we at right now. Men want their ears tickled. The Bible says that there would be a time where people won't endure the truth, that they will heap up for themselves teachers and preachers because they have itchy ears. They're, they're going to want their ears tickled. They won't want the sharp preaching of God's word that gets into the heart and brings conviction of their disobedience. And preachers today, they water down the word of God. They take the sharpness off of God's sword so that it doesn't cut the heart with conviction because they don't want to lose congregational members. They don't want to lose people out of their fellowship because they want their tithing money. And this is an issue today. Men are in compromise. There's deceivers in the pulpit. There are blind leaders leading the blind. They have committed treason against the kingdom of God and they have went AWOL. They have walked away from their sincere, heartfelt commitment to Christ and they went their own way into disobedience. And they water down the truth of God's word because they don't want to offend people. They don't want the word of God 
to be offensive. We are in a time right now of a falling away. And the Bible said in 2 Thessalonians that a falling away would come. And it's talking about a falling away from biblical truth. That's what it's talking about. And when it says a falling away, it's not just talking about people that's just renouncing Christ. It's talking about a falling away from biblical truth. It's talking about men making up their own deceiving doctrines and watering down the truth of God's word. They don't care about preaching against sin no more. They don't care about warning people of hell anymore. They don't care about preaching righteousness anymore. All it is is these watered down sermons that don't bring conviction. There's these storytelling preachers. They're not preaching in partnership with the Holy Ghost. We are in the land of the backwards right now where the real preachers are the bad guys. The preachers of righteousness are the bad guys. The ones that are lifting up their voice and publicly denouncing sin and calling their generation to repentance, they're the bad guys, where the good guy preachers are the ones that are saying, hey, just be quiet. Don't talk about sin. Don't warn them people about hell. Just be quiet. You're condemning people. This is where we at right now. We are in a time where lukewarm Christians will stand up and come against preachers who are calling their generation to repentance. And that's the time we're in right now. We are in the time of apostasy. We are in the time of a falling away. And it's going to get really, really dark in these last days. And it's already dark right now. People are offended. People have a form of godliness. They walk around in bitterness of heart. They walk around in compromise and disobedience and they say that they are Christian. They come against anybody who's preaching against sin. They come against anybody who's trying to preach in such a way to turn the people away from their sinful life and to turn to holiness to Jesus Christ. And anybody who preaches obedience to Jesus, they accuse them of being a legalist and preaching a works salvation. This is the apostasy of the church. They believe obedience is works. And this is the delusion that the church is under right now. And I believe that these doctrines of demons are just delusions given to people who don't love the truth. They don't want to live for God. They don't want to deny themselves and pick up their cross. So God will let them believe a delusion. He will hand them over to a lie. And what is a lie? A doctrine of demon brought about by a deceiving spirit. They don't love the truth. They don't want to live holy. They don't want to obey. So anybody who comes preaching obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, they believe it's works, that they don't have to obey God. They don't have to do nothing. All they have to do is be in an intellectual agreement that Jesus died on the cross and they got their eternity tag punched and they okay. And God will let them believe that delusion. And I, I believe a lot of people are under this delusion right now. And this is the apostasy of the church we in. It's going to get dark. It's so dark right now, it blows my mind when I look at some of the things that's going on. And it's going to get a lot darker. We in the last days, we see a dictatorship is coming. We see that many people are offended. There's a lot of hostility in the world. There's a lot of confusion within the professing Christian church. And all this is going to get a lot darker. People are content, will continue to deceive and they will continually continue to be deceived. But we who are preaching the truth, who are preaching righteousness, who are preaching Jesus Christ, who are preaching the message of repentance, we got to keep doing the work of an evangelist and we got to keep fulfilling our mission for the Lord. We got to keep fulfilling the ministry that Christ has given unto us. Because guess what? The church is not doing it, my friends. 
Most of the churches are not going out into the street. Most of the churches are not going out and evangelize. This is why Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. Because all the churches got self-focused. They turned into disobedience and they took, they got their lampstand taken from them. And the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. All the churches all over, they don't want to labor for God. They don't want to go out into the streets. They don't want to go out and reach the lost and preach to the homeless. You can go preach to all kind of homeless people out there. Yet we have churches all over and barely none of them go into the streets. Barely none of them go out and do evangelism. And this is what the church is here for. The church is here to be the light of the world. The light is to go out into the darkness. And reach people with the gospel. We are to bring the truth into this dark and rebellious world. This is why the church is called the light. Yet the churches have apostatized. They're not doing what Christ has commanded them to do. He said, go out into the world and preach. Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. That means go out. And tell them the message of the Bible. Go out there and point them to Jesus and tell them that there's only one way of of salvation and it's Jesus. That there's only one name given amongst men that we can be saved and that is Jesus. Yet we, in order to do what Christ has commanded, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and deny ourselves and put ourselves to the side and go out there. And be obedient to the Lord. Be faithful to the Lord. We have to have faith to obey the Lord and go out and do what he has commanded his church to do. Yet we are in a time of apostasy where most of the people who are professing Jesus Christ are not being obedient to the commands of Jesus Christ. We are in a falling away. To you who are being faithful to the Lord, keep being faithful. Keep preaching God's word. Keep being a witness. Keep being a light for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are not being a light, if you are not being obedient, there's still hope for you. You can repent. You can be convicted in your heart and say, God, I, I haven't been faithful to you. I haven't been obedient to you. I haven't been giving you my best, Lord. And I want to repent today and I want to get right with you, Lord. I I want to be in service for your kingdom and just be willing to give your life over to the Lord in service to his kingdom and begin to go and do what Christ has called you to do. Be obedient to the word of God. Be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name.